He hangs out the storm and he tells the sun when to shine and kisses the flowers each morning with you. But he's still not too busy to care about you. And we have a heavenly Father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart so full of love. He really cares when your head is that low. Consider
voice of God was saying to you this morning, come unto me, and I'll give you the rest. Come unto me. We're at the end of the year. At the Feast of the Tabernacle time, even though we've already celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles, we are at the time that we give thanks for the harvest intake that we received this year. That's what we're doing today. I don't know if I'll read any scriptures. I can't hardly see this morning. And I didn't have a thought all day till sitting at the piano this morning. And as Brother Matthew was talking about why we give offerings and why we do the things that we've done, do you know why they brought in and gave offerings? sacrifices unto the priest. The Levitical priest had no part in any kind of inheritance of a natural understanding. When all the tribes of Israel had land given to them, and they had precious things given, the Levitical priest had nothing. That's Their, their inheritance was nothing. So they would come and, and God made it that they would come and give their offerings and they would go and get burnt and all these things. But a portion of that was given unto the priest so that they could sustain life and that they could eat and that they could do all these things. I'm not about to ask nobody to start giving your pastor a paycheck. I ain't where I'm going to start. But where I am going is that the Levitical priest of that day, they went out and reached God for the people. Now, I'm nowhere near on a totem pole. I'm not even on the bottom of it. I'm under it. When they dug the hole and stuck the totem pole in there, they put it right on top of my head that I couldn't even get out and get a hold of it. That's how low I am as a pastor, okay? But I think about men like Dad and Brother Red and Brother George that give their life for the people. They reached God when the people couldn't reach God. Yeah. Huh? And all the troubles that my dad is going through right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yet yeah, he could still find the language of God this morning. Huh? Reach to a place that seems unreachable, but yet there's always somebody put in our lives that can obtain what seems to be unreachable. Now, I was telling you this morning, I had a thought that comes to my mind, and of course, I don't know why I didn't think of it. It's Thanksgiving. But I looked back at Sister Katie and I said, I love this old song right here, Thanks. I give you thanks for all that you have done. I am so blessed my soul has found rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. The little simplest things in our life we forget to even thank God about. And I was listening to Brother Joseph pray this morning and how he wasn't praying, oh God, give us this, give us this, give us this. He was saying, oh God, I thank you this morning. Yes, I thank you because you allowed us to come in and worship you. I thank you because you have done these things. I thank you because you watched over our health. I thank you because you've given me a family. I thank you because how you watched over my parents. I thank you because of all these things. Lord, I thank you for just allowing me to come in and worship you. Oh, Lord, I give you thanks and all of you.
cross was ever brought on Golgotha's hill, there was Christ in the land. He's always been with us. He's always watched over us. He's always brought us through the floods. He's always brought us through the famine. He's always brought us through the boisterous wind. He's always brought us through the end of it. He's always brought us to the new beginning of it. He's been with us the whole time. Why ain't we thanking Him for the blessings that He's given us? Why haven't you given him thanks? If you didn't have health problems, you wouldn't get on your knees or even bow your head down to God. You'd think that you're the most gracious thing, holy thing, and the best thing going on. But God allows you to go through troubles in life that you can thank him for bringing you through it. I have people tell me sometimes because I do have health problems. First thing I want to tell you, Brother Matthew was bringing some of this out this morning in Sunday school, and I know you wasn't here. That's shame on you, not shame on me. We opened the doors up, got good heat in here, you just don't get out of the bed. So it's your fault that you ain't learning nothing about God. It ain't God's fault, and it ain't my fault, and it ain't the teacher's fault. It's your fault. So you don't know how to conduct yourself or act or get God to move in your life? Come to Sunday school, you might learn something. I just, you can pay me later for that, Brother Matthew. Now listen, he was talking about a lot of the adversities that I've gone through, health issues that I've had to face, getting part of my foot cut off and losing all these things, you know? Losing gallbladders, losing this, losing that, being sick, doing all these things. But yet I, I still come to church, I still pastor and all that. You won't tell, I'm going to tell you something. I told you I was a little spin on totem pole. You know why I had all them health problems? Because I was too stupid. I kept eating things that I didn't need to eat. I kept doing things I don't need to do. It wasn't God's fault. It wasn't trying to make me look like nothing. It was my own stupidity. Why you go through a lot of your own things? Because you go through it with your own stupidity. That's, right. huh? That's what we do. But yet God brings us through them. And I want the world to know that His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Why do you do that, Brother Greg? Because I don't want no Muslim out there thinking that I serve His God and that His God and my God are the same. I want you to know my God cannot be found over yonder in a graveyard. His bones are not there. He's got His bones with Him. He's risen. He's alive. He's well. And He'll do anything that I ask Him to do. And I want you to know the rest of them can go over there, stick their nose in the grave. He ain't going to move. And their faith is nowhere near as strong as my faith. I catch anybody trying to tell uh, my children to write in some kind of stupid school lesson that Muslim faith is greater than Christian faith. I got news for you. They think they'll fight for their God. My God will fight for me. I got faith in Him. I got faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And without Him, there is no other God. And we need to learn to serve in America alone. We need to push God, the Lord Jesus Christ, to the front. And let this world know we ain't backing down. They can go to hell. No, we're not going to go there and be with them. God fires me up. Amen. Got a Muslim poor president up there that this week he wants to cry out. Oh, I don't care. I don't, well, I don't care. Get it on the tape and put it out there. Obama's nothing but a Muslim from the beginning to the very end. He's not part of America because America belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Gets up there and then tries to bring out scriptures to benefit him. Well, that joker don't even know what the scriptures is. Don't oppress the strangers. If you ain't got them, you can't oppress them. Now, give him thanks for all the things. Do you know why we got people going into the government systems, not just Obama, but way before Obama ever got there? Do you know why they go into office? 
The Bible said that God sets up kings and he tears them down. America has got too lax. They don't pray no more. They don't see God no more. They don't even know who God is. They run into and fro and they don't have no idea where they're going or why they're going there. But the Lord takes us through adversities in our lives to bring us out on the other side to prove to the world that He's trying to reach that He is God. The scripture says, Hear ye, O Israel, our Lord is one Lord. Our God is one God. And it's about time that we let the world know His name is Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for being here. I was looking at this little advertisement that keeps popping up. And it's a little bitty girl, and I don't know if they're, what nationality they are. At least she's speaking some kind of English, and I can understand it. But she's real little. And she's looking at the moon in the sun time. The sun is shining, but the moon is still present. And she's screaming out to her dad there, I see the moon. I see the moon. And she's pointing, I see the moon. And then the advertisement is, is that the man's just bought her a little telescope and he's bringing it, it done it on his phone, you know, let technology, you know, blah, blah, blah. But he said, I can get you a better vision of the moon. I get you this telescope, you can see it a lot better. But the little girl's hollering out, Daddy, I see the moon. I see the moon. And then the sweetest little boy, she says, but I can't reach it. I can't reach it. I can see it. But I can't reach it. So Daddy, in his intellectual thought pattern, is buying her a telescope that she can really, really see the moon. But he's not giving her to me. I'm thinking this way my brain works. He's not giving her a thought of how to reach the moon and be able to touch it. To the little child and to dad, it seems unreachable. It seems unattainable. But my thought pattern is man did achieve and they touched the moon. And they're going to go back, and it's going to be more and more and more and more and more. They're going to find other worlds, and they're going to go to them. That's just the way technology is. It looks like things that are impossible, but yet, if we have the right education, it is always obtainable. Right. Huh? Lower. You understand what I'm saying this morning? It may look far off. It may look like that your troubles are not going to be answered. And you can see the sunshine on the other side. Brother Matthew was talking this morning and he didn't go into no details and I don't ask people their problems and I wish that everybody would quit asking me what other people's problems are. I don't get involved in it. You don't need to get involved in it. All the thing you need to do is learn how to pray. Right. Huh? Hallelujah. I, 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 my, one of my business partners always asked me questions. Always asking me questions. I love him to death. I, I, I think the world of him. But the other day, I just finally got tired of it. And I told him, I said, listen. I said, I don't know what the problem is. I just know that the man was in the hospital. And he got better. And then he had to go back to the doctor. He was having trouble again. Well, what kind of trouble? I said, I don't know. I didn't ask him. If he wanted me to know, he would say, hey, Greg, guess what? You know? What do you do about it? You pray. You pray. Listen, I can come and you can say, Greg, uh, uh, I got an earache. I want you to pray. Okay, Lord, touch his ear. Ain't nothing wrong with his ear. What the whole trouble was, he had a tooth that was abscessed and it was causing the ear to hurt. So a lot of times, even though we think we're praying intelligent, 
Secondly, we still don't need to pray just for the ear because there's nothing wrong with the ear. There's another problem that's further down deeper that's causing that issue. So we need to learn to pray for the whole man. For everything. And all that's around it. That way that when he gets through it, he can give God thanks for all things. Uh, now, reaching something that is unattainable is possible with the right education, with the right training, with the right teaching. So I began to think about that little girl as she was hollering, I cannot reach it. I see it, but I can't touch it, and I want to. That was what was really in her heart. She wanted to touch it. It was something that was fascinating. It was something that was there. And we do the same thing. We look to the Lord Jesus Christ. We say, I can see him. He's far off. He's there. I, I, I see him. And oh, I want to do better. I want to go for I want to be able to grasp a hold to it. But it looks like Jesus is just too far away. Bless you, Lord. But Peter said, Lord, if it be you, uh -huh. just bid me come unto you. Uh -huh. Come. Simple commandments. I don't believe. Now, I believe that when Jesus called Lazarus out of the grave, I believe he spoke it with authority. Yeah. I believe he said, Lazarus, come forth. Just like the Bible said when we were studying, I looked up that word this morning under the Strong's definition of, contra, uh, of, of constraint. And the Bible said that Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship. You know what that word constrained means? He ordered them. He necessitated it. He got vicious with them. He got, I ain't putting up with you. Get in that boat and get in it now. Yeah. Huh? That's what that word meant. He done it with force. He wouldn't play it around. Now when Jesus come a little bit later and he was walking on the sea and Peter asked him, Lord, if that be you, bid me come unto you. Jesus didn't say it with authority that time, I don't believe. I believe he just said, come. Lord. Peter did not hesitate to get out of the ship. Even though in just a few steps later, he was going to be crying out for help. He heard the voice. He believed in the voice. And he realized that Jesus was attainable if he would just get out and walk over the problem that it looked like he was facing. And even though the problem scared him enough that he lost faith for a moment, Jesus, even though Peter was drowning, Jesus reached down and grabbed him. Huh? It may look like something is not obtainable, but if you will just hold on and walk upon the troubles of the waters, upon the heads of the people and their boisterous winds that they're blowing right now, you can obtain Christ. Because if you go far enough looking for Him, He will find you and He will pull you out of the darkest, deepest trouble that you could ever be in. Then all the thing you got to do is give you thanks. Lord, I give you thanks for all that you've done. But yet, when we find ourselves in situations, pray, 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 pray. Help me pray, help me pray, help me pray. But none of us go to the point and say, oh, I thank you, Jesus. Huh? You stuck me in this hospital. You put me up here. You got surgery ready for me. Lord, it was my own stupidity of the things that I had done. But, you know, I, I've got enough faith to see that you're going to bring me through it. No, we get so scared that we say, oh, God, pray. They're going to put me under. They're going to cut me up. Huh? Yeah. We do. Are we ever going to see our families again? Are we ever going to see our children again? We never take into thought that the person that is going to operate on us went through a whole lot of training. 
They went through a whole lot of study and they went through a whole lot of education. And before they ever got to you, they probably had a whole lot of practice. Huh? We don't never think of those things. We began to worry, are we even going to come out of this? But yet, if we just go ahead and give God thanks that He sent us to the right one that's already been educated, they're not just coming straight out of school and going to begin to cut on me to see if they got it right. I'm going to someone that has had practice because that's who God put us with. You really understand what I'm telling you this morning? You don't go through nothing without God already preparing the way. You think that Jesus did not know that the people on the boat were going to be in trouble? The same one that sent them, that commanded them, that forced them into the ship is the same one that said, wind began to blow. Now we can thank God all the time for when he was on the ship himself. And they come down and they woke him up and they got him up there and said, aren't you, uh, aren't you concerned we're going to lose our life? Jesus thinking, my God, if I gave you life, how in the world could you lose it? You can't die. The Bible says you die once unto to sin. And after that's the judgment. A Christian will never die. That's right. He's already dead. He's gone. Hopefully he's blinded. Unless a seed falls into the ground and dies and rots, it cannot produce life. So hopefully our life is that we have died, we're rotting, and yet we're sprouting something that is fresh, green, and usable. Lord, uh, Now some people just die to the ground, they rot, and they produce poison ivy or poison oak. Yeah. Or now the newest thing out that I never heard of when I was a kid is sumac. Huh? I've heard people suing mac, but I've never heard of sumac. But yet, my wife and my daughters are so allergic to it, they just break out just about from looking at it. Amen. Uh, see how you got an amen right there? Huh? That's good. But yet, we don't realize that the same Jesus that spoke peace be still to the storm is the same Jesus that spoke you boisterous wind. Get it up, because I'm going to prove a point here. Yeah. Huh? The same one that spoke peace be still to the storm is the same one that called the storm to come that you would ask him to rid of the problem. Well, we don't take into consideration those things. So, oh, I'm going to have to hurt a little bit. I'm going to have to go through pain a little bit. I'm going to have to go through uh, a little agitation in my life. It ain't right. It ain't fair. You're a wimp. How in the world can God make you strong if you don't want to go through anything? That's your ball. People talk all the time because if you've been around me a little bit, if you ever worked around me, I'll tell you sorry, low down and old kept, and you ain't never done a day's work in your life. I told old brother Adam that, and old brother Adam, before he left here to go to Kentucky, he was purposed in his heart to prove to me that he was a worker and he wasn't a bum. Huh? So what do you think? I think that when he got to Kentucky up there, they saw a different Adam. They saw a man that was willing to work. He was willing to prove himself and he was willing to do whatever it took to supply for his family just because of a little agitation that I throw in people's lives. Some people can't handle it. They grow up and they get strong. Some people run off and talk about me and, and the church and everything else. And you know what? They still saw it. They're still low down. There's still no account. And they're proving it to society. They're not fit to be in it. A person that's fit to be in it will overcome adversities in their life and find the Lord Jesus Christ and begin yes, to give him thanks right. for everything and not say, oh, God, somebody said something about me and I can't do it. Therefore, in Hebrews 6, therefore, believing the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection, not letting again the foundation of repentance from dead works and a faith toward God. Other baptisms. 
of this, of that. Let us go on into perfection, church. How do we do that? By learning to give the Lord Jesus Christ thanks for everything. Dan told the story of a little old black lady. Had a couple little old grand youngins running around. And a storm was headed in the direction of their house. And it was going to tear the house apart. And the little old children run up there to Granny and they said, Mama, pray. 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 The storm's going to come. There's no way out of it. The storm is coming. Pray, pray, pray. And she said, honey child, I prayed before the storm ever got here. Uh, I prayed before it ever come. Believe me. You ever went through anything? That's why you got that leg right there. You were just born with that. You don't even know that it's not even supposed to be right. We look at Brother Michael because he's got a, a different kind of a leg than we do. So, said, oh, God, we feel sorry for it. But before he was ever born, God seen that he was going to make something out of it. And he done this, and he never even looks at those kind of situations. It's just natural. We go right on, get up every day, do the things that we're going to do, and we keep striving on into perfection. Huh? Some of you didn't even know about that about it. Huh? He just gets up, he goes right on, he jumps, he hops, he preaches. He's fired up. Why? Because he doesn't let little things become an adversity to him so bad that he can't overcome them. It's a great teaching. The things that you go through will make you stronger yes. if you will just pray before the storm ever gets there. Amen. But I got news for Michael. He's already faced some other things. Still looking at finishing them up real quick. But that wasn't the only problem that he was going to have in his life. He just went through a three, four, five, I don't know how long he was in there, three, four, five months ordeal, 77 days. It looked like the end of the world. But yet he come through it. <laughs> was treated better than anybody else. He's treated better than he deserved. Uh, but yet God knows what he wanted to make out of him, so he just proved to him, look, I might put you in a situation, but I'll make them have favor with you where they'll give you double of everything. Yes, uh, they gave him double food, man. Did you hear that? Gave him double food. He ain't done nothing but waste it. He ain't getting an ounce of weight. Huh? Wasted double food. He could survive just like everybody else on the board. But they found favor, gave him double food, and he ain't gonna gain one ounce. Amateur. Don't know how to put on weight. Uh, yeah. See how much he waste is today downstairs. I know y'all dying to get down there and meet and shut up. This is what I'm getting at. He had a problem that to us seems like there's no way in the world to sit there and cry all day long. Uh, when they told me when I was 20-something years old that I was going, I was into diabetes, I went home and I cried. I said, oh, my life's over with. It's over. It's done. It's been 28 years that I've dealt with it. And not dealt with it very good either. But yet I've overcome it. Why? Because I got up off my crying towel. I got rid of it. And I said, I don't care what I face. I'm still going to go through it. Guess what? That wasn't the only trouble I had. That wasn't the only trouble he had. You haven't went through your last problem either. You you think that you just faced something? Sister Lois said, told me a few days ago that in all of her life she's never had no problems to this year. And then at this year that she's had more problems, more surgeries, more people trying to scare her to death, but she was dead gone and over with. Thank you, huh? She got two fingers back there taped up right now and went in there and took a little old splinter out of her hand. With no real doctors in this world no more. She'd have got a hold of a real doctor the first day he came in there. He'd have said, let me see that. He took his pocket knife, split it open, got the thing out, wrapped it up, sent her home and said, go to work. 
huh? But because of the technology that we have today, they had to go down there and do MRIs. Get them prepared to go to the duck for a splinter. Go down there, put her to sleep or whatever they done, open the little fingers up, wrap them up and all that. You know why they done that? Because her fingers points out straight now and she learns how to wave to God and say, thank you, Jesus. I know she's going to bring it through me the whole time. Glory. Huh? We go through things and we think that there's no way out. Yeah. But yet, I was talking about real man. I lost my thought pattern. I was talking about Brother Matthew a while ago said that in his year, he seen a situation that looked like that it was impassable, that there was no way to go through it, that he was stressed out, he was worried over it, and he couldn't even see the daylight at the end of the tunnel. But yet, when he got serious with God, and he really cried out, and he really prayed about it, and he got up the next morning, and the situation was handled, he oh, looked at it and said, what yeah. the was I worried about it for to begin with? It yeah. was simply handled. That's right. We do the same things every day in our life. That's right. Oh. That's right. We do the same things. We worry, we worry, we worry. And we see, well... You know, I, I told him, little brother Bill the other day, I was talking to him, and he just had that surgery on his arm and his rotary cuff and, and all these things. He had to screw up, uh, screw down into his bone to hold his muscle down, all kind of stuff. And I talked to him, and he was hurting so bad. And when you get in enough pain, pain kill pills don't work. You know, I'm telling you, Come on. I've been there. I've seen times that it just is no hope for it, and it looks like it's over with. But I was talking to Brother Bill, and I said, Brother Bill, I said, you know what's going to happen when that thing gets better? He said, what? I said, it won't hurt no more. Amen. Huh? Amen. It won't hurt no more. All oh, right now, it looks like there's no way of peace, no way. But there's coming a day when it's going to get better. Amen. So we learn to give God thanks now. Yes. Yes. He begins yes. to activate his faith towards you because you activated your faith toward him. And it begins a healing process. And he gets yeah. better and he moves you out of that. Right. You're going to get lapsed on God. And you're going to start a whole other problem. If we would learn to just be on top before it ever comes. Amen. Lord, I know there's a storm coming. But I'm going to thank you now for taking me through it. Yes, Lord. Uh, Brother Michael Pike preached that message. When you find yourself in hell, keep walking. You're going to go through hell. Because you're in hell now. You need to understand that. This is heaven and this is hell. And if you're not walking with Jesus Christ, you're walking in hell. That's right. And you need to learn that. But in your walk with Christ, and you find yourself in hell, just keep walking. Huh? In the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? You're my rod. You're my staff. You're my everything. And because of you, I will go through. Job's words were this. Though God slay me. Who put the balls on Job? Come on. Who put Job in hell? Come on. Who put Job at death's door? Who put Job's children out of reach? Who put his lands in? Who done all these things? Well, Satan did. He went before God, and God told him, said, you can do anything you want to do to him, but don't touch his life. But yet, Job said, though God slain me, he never gave Satan credit for anything. We give Satan credit for things that Satan ain't even thought about doing. Huh? Hey, Satan didn't make me go out there and bust my foot open and not really look after it like I should. Satan didn't make me not go to the doctor when it was hurting so bad. I just kept right on pushing through it. I'll get through it. Oh, man, I'm tough. I'm bad. I'm this. I'm that. I just kept right on pushing through it to the point that I got up there. And they had said, okay, you should have come in here a month earlier. We might could have done something. But now you're going to face the re you're going to face 
the, the answer to your problems and you're going to lose part of what you come into this world with. It wasn't Satan that done it to me. It was my own stupidity. Huh? You find yourself walking through hell because of your own stupidity. Yeah. When you see flames out there burning, you need to walk around it or learn to fly over it. You don't need to go through it. But if you do find yourself going through it, and you will, give thanks to God for bringing you through it and don't stop. Just keep on walking. If we would just learn that, oh, I am not in that situation no more. Oh, God, I give you thanks. So what you brought me through it. If we would just learn to say, but God, that's not the last of my troubles. That's not the last of my situations. That's not the last time you're going to use me to prove to the world that you're greater than I am. And begin to give you thanks for the next situation ahead of time. You'll find out that the storm's not going to happen to you. Because you know how to overcome adversities in your life. We preach this that Apostle Paul said we don't need the law because it was just a schoolmaster to bring us into the day of Christ. But that's not what Apostle Paul said. Apostle Paul said use it because it is a schoolmaster until you come to it. You better pay me good for this one. I want you to know something. You're not so intelligent that you don't need to learn about the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? You're not that smart. You haven't been educated that much. Yeah. Brother Greg, you rebuked me on this day. The Bible said rebuke over me. Yeah. You need to learn. Do you know why Brother Greg's put on 60 pounds? Can't button his britches anymore? Has to go and hunt different shirts down because they just, I don't waste food brother, like you do. When I eat food, it, it does its job. It puts fat on the body. Uh, you too, Joseph. I ain't brought you in this. You wasted a lot of food. Both of y'all sitting on the front bench, y'all need to be up there so you can eat more. I'll probably be in the first in the line in just a minute if you beat Brother Michael back there, and I don't know who to beat you. And I'm talking about this Michael on this side. Now, if we can find ourselves eating of the Word of God, longing for it, when my wife woke me up this morning because of situations that was in my life last night that ain't none of your business. But I haven't slept in many days. You go miss a couple hours a week and y'all think it's pretty bad. I have missed many, many, many days of sleep and rest. And my wife woke me up this morning and I had purposed in my heart not to even be here today. I've been going so far. We're not having church tonight, and I don't think we're going to have church Tuesday night. I don't know if people's going, if they're going back to work or if they're going down to spend Thanksgiving down there. So we're not going to have church Tuesday night. We're not going to have church tonight. I want you to take this week and be with your families and learn to give God thanks for your families. Uh, I'm serious about this. You need greater now because you're fixing to face some things. You're going to need your families. You're going to need to learn how to love one another. Because this world is fixing to face some things that it hasn't ever faced. They thought Hitler was bad. Hitler was a baby compared to some of the things that we're fixing to go through. Uh, and the more I look at Hitler, I'm not so sure he was wrong on some accounts. And the way that the Nazis got together and destroyed people, I don't agree with. 
but he, one thing for sure, he was a man that saw his nation in trouble and he wanted a greater nation, a greater place for his people. And the people that's supposed to be looking over us as Americans, they want us dead. That they can give what we have to somebody else. But not according to the scriptures. The scripture says, I gave you this land. You want the man, I'll protect you. That's what the scriptures teach. I'd love to have some debates with some of these people. Openly so that the world can hear because you're not going to change nobody's thought pattern that, that thinks that they're right. But America was made for the children of God. That's right. The one God, the true God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we need to learn to give God thanks. We need to take this week and we need to pray. We need to reevaluate our lives and see where we're missing things at. And we need to figure out this. You're not smart enough to do it on your own. You're not educated enough. You're not in God enough. Huh? Let me tell you something. I go and listen to other preachers. I put young preachers up. I do different things because I realize there's things in that scripture I need to hear. Just like the way you prayed this morning, son, and I thank you. I thank you. It wasn't just one thought that he said, but that one thought really struck home with me this morning when we said, Lord, I want to thank you for allowing us to come and worship you. And yet we think it's so great of a deal because we showed up. Yeah. Uh, Lord have mercy. People are so so caught up in to the world that if the Vatican does something, the Baptist folks get excited about it. That's sort of goofy. American people are so involved in what the Queen of England is doing that they get so crazy when something's going on. When this last prince, king, whatever he is, was getting married, the world went nuts. He's in another country. He has nothing to do with me. If he knew as much about marriage as I know about marriage, he would have told the people, shut up. We got problems ahead of us. I don't care how much money I got. Huh? Why? Because if you're married, you're going to have problems. You're going to have situations. You're going to have adversities. Money doesn't always have to do with it. Huh? Two people learning how to live together and becoming one is almost impossible. But it's like this. If you know who puts the marriage together, he'll keep it together. Yes, Lord, uh, and he'll work on your behalf. Some of you looks out and you think, well, it's almost possible to have a family. You put yourself ahead in God and you really rely on God and he's going to put quivers into your little patch that you wear on your back. You know what that means? Some of you is going to have children when it looked like you couldn't have children. He's going to give it to you. Some of you is going to have a better walk in God because you don't see the problems that you're facing now, but you're seeing the moon out there and you see that you can obtain it. Everything in this world is a benefit to you. Learn it. Educate yourself with this word. The little simple scripture is not quoted just like this, but the little simple uh, scripture in the Bible, Ezekiel 16, 6. When I passed by, I saw thee polluted in own blood. I said unto thee, live. I said unto thee, live. And it's a little bit more different than that, but that's, that's what it's saying. If you learn to quote that verse, if you can't even remember the verse, but you can remember Ezekiel 16, 6 will stop bleeding. And educate yourself and believe in what this word says. Remember what the word says? Heaven and earth will what? But my word what? Shall abide forever. So where's the word of God going to abide in? Is it going to abide in this book? 
This book will burn. This book will burn. Set it on fire. It'll burn. It's natural. It's man-made. But what's on the inside of it will abide forever. It will cause you to have a greater life if you will learn to give God thanks. And I'll thank the most precious heaven of the Lord. What a beautiful day that you created. Lord, you gave us the privilege to come into your house this morning to worship you, to learn how to give thanks, to learn how to glorify you, to learn how to praise you. Lord, that we could learn to come together as a church family, eat together, and just worship for a little while, have fellowship, go home with our natural families, be thankful for them and what they do for us every day. And Lord, quit, quit criticizing other people and talking about other people. And Lord, just learn how to pray for them that they'll come into, that they won't be ashamed, that they'll feel like that they're a contributor, Lord, and they're not getting something for nothing, right, God, but that you have purposed in them to be a part of something greater than just breathing, common air. Lord, we thank you for touching our families, touching the sickness, God. We thank you, Lord, though you slay us, yet we're still going to trust you. Lord, if you slayed our family, yet we're going to still trust you. Lord, we know that at the times of these things that happen in our life, we don't know why, we don't, we don't understand it, but Lord, you purposed that it would be greater and that we could just see it and reach it and obtain it. God, the world may not be able to touch the land, but Lord, they don't have you. Lord, because of you, we can go so much further than the moon. We can even touch you. Lord, a woman reached down and touched the hem of the garment. The things that would completely enclose God, she touched. And Lord, you're bringing us to a place that we can touch you. And we thank you for it. Father, you see the food downstairs. These ladies have worked hard. Maybe some men have worked.